Many Magic the Gathering players ask the question, is it worth it to buy a Game Night Free-For-All 2022? The pentagram-shaped product that absolutely would have alarmed certain religious types in the 1990s is back. Game Night! A multiplayer melee battle box of five pre-constructed decks balanced against one another and meant to be the Magic the Gathering board game-like product to pull out and jam casual games with friends on, you guessed it, Game Night. But like many made for casuals products, is Game Night 2022 just another yeah, sounds nice product which some will buy then leave on their shelf for years, maybe playing it once and getting bored halfway through before switching over to Catan? Or is it a fantastic embodiment of the Magic the Gathering gameplay experience, a perfect gateway product for new players while still being exciting and worthwhile for those who already love and play Magic the Gathering? Well, either way, there's Five cards you can't get anywhere else unless you buy this, so let's take a look. But first, food that drives? No, that's ridiculous. Or is it? Well, it might as well drive because that's how HelloFresh does it. Food delivered right to your door and sponsor of today's video. Regardless of how HelloFresh gets to my door, they do. And the meals do not disappoint. I know what you're thinking. I could just go get a frozen meal at the Mart and save. Ha ha ha, good luck, because HelloFresh meals aren't frozen. What? And they are priced accordingly. HelloFresh is always delivering quality produce from real farmers in less than one week. And now you, yes, you have more control over your meals with Hello Custom. With Custom, you can swap out proteins for a veggie meal, and just like that, you've started a completely new diet. All right, I'll admit it. Food might not actually drive, but at least HelloFresh is driving home. Eh? A new convenient way to feast. Literally, get started easily with this opportunity and just follow my link in the description and use code P-O-G-T-C-C-O-C-T-65 for 65% off plus free shipping on your first box. Thank you, HelloFresh, for sponsoring today's video. Beep, beep. A Game Night box contains the following. 1. Game Night Play Guide and Rule Book 5. 60 card decks, each containing one exclusive, not available anywhere else Magic the Gathering card. These are brand new designs, and we'll talk about how well they are designed in just a moment. 15 double-sided tokens. 5 spin down die. A variety of cardboard punch outs, such as plus one plus one counters. and the box itself, which serves as a deck holder, or at least it does until you realize it will not fit these decks once they've been sleeved. Come on, Wizards of the Coast. Even casual players sleeve their decks. The majority of players use sleeves. Stop thinking casuals are dum-dums who don't. There are two main elements to a game night box. 300 cards for $49.99 and five exclusive cards that you cannot obtain anywhere else. The merit of this product is one or both of these, but in both cases, the question is the same. Is it any good? That's the question. Are those five 60 card decks fun to play, well balanced and worth half a Benjamin to have on your shelf in case you and up to four friends get Get tired of playing Seven Wonders, Dominion, or other games during game night? Likewise, are those five unique cards ones that players established in Magic would play with, would put in their decks? Whether it's five 60 card decks or five brand new Magic cards, the question remains, is it any good? Well, let's start by examining the easier of the two to quantify, the five brand new cards. So how does one get these game night cards? 
by buying Game Night. That's pretty much why they're there, to get you to buy Game Night. Emeril Elfheim Elite is currently the most valuable of the five at $21.39. Obviously, a lot of Elven Commander decks are going to love this. As if Elf Ball decks weren't powerful enough, whenever Emeril Elfheim Elite attacks, it gets plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of other Elves you control. You may also have Emeril assign its combat damage as though it weren't blocked. Fun that it's a legendary to head up a commander deck, but I think it's most likely going to end up as part of the 99. Nagi, Draco Zealot is next at $16.82. Scion of the Ur Dragon, anyone? I don't think this is a busted card. In fact, it's debatable how much value you're really getting by the reduction in casting cost of your dragons. But it's fun and on flavor, it's flashy. I think it hits the mark pretty good as a nice exclusive for this type of product. As does Voiger Necropolis Tyrant. What's cool about this card is that it isn't necessarily limited to Zombie Tribal. Though, of course, it'll go good in a lot of those decks as well. Whenever another creature dies during your turn, put a plus one plus one counter on Vogar, and then when it dies, draw a card for each plus one plus one counter on it. Sacrifice decks are going to want this card. I'm surprised it's not the top of the bunch. The Angel Seraph of Steel is about eight bucks and change. She's a 3-4 for four, 4 that is more an Equipment Matters theme than an Angel Tribal. It's okay. Doesn't wow me, but maybe you're going to really enjoy it if you have a special Angel Equip deck. And Maeve, the Insidious Singer, has an interesting goad effect that doubles with drawing cards. But it's a Siren, not a Merfolk, so I don't care. Art's really cool, though. Okay, the art is really cool. Beyond that, there's a few reprints of note. Villas, Broker of Blood, which is currently a $6.40 card. Dragon Temple. Tempest, which is $5.95. Beast Whisperer, which is already dropping to $2.40, as is Plea for Power. Some other nice but not costly inclusions of Colossus Hammer, Path to Exile, and even Counterspell and Lightning Bolt mean, if nothing else, players are experiencing fun, representative magic cards in these decks. I cannot tell you how ridiculous it was putting cards like Shock in place of Lightning Bolt in past casual products. Come on, new players players can handle Lightning Bolt, and you know what? It's fun. I always felt that past game night boxes were somewhat underwhelming, that Wizards of the Coast often confused casual play with unable to handle the full Magic the Gathering experience. But here, I think these decks are really trying to take casual players seriously. Radical. Overrun, Factor Fiction, Fleshbag Marauder, Elvish Archdruid, Swords to Plowshares, not to mention the other classic cards constructing these decks. This is much more of what I consider a fun casual experience to be, jamming out games with a dozen or so of Magic's more recognizable and rightfully remembered cards, all while having fun with zombies, elves, dragons, angels, and uh, blue nonsense. Hey, I guess Merfolk would have been too on the nose. But nonetheless, I can't help but feel someone at Wizards of the Coast is actually taking at least a few notes from my prior videos. Hi there, hello, if you're watching. I know you are. In terms of financial value, putting aside the other 295 cards, the five exclusive cards alone are worth the cost of the box. In fact, as of the filming of this video, which is several days after release, thank you very much, delayed shipping to my local game store, these five cards alone would come to $71.92. But what about the other 295 cards? There's a lot of bulk, for sure. But if we eliminate everything that isn't worth a dollar, there's still $38.65 worth of value here. Sure, it's mostly one and two dollar cards, but it adds up and it shows that this product isn't entirely jank. Though, to be fair, a lot of it is. So yeah, it's hard to lose out purely financially speaking when you're looking at 300 cards for $49.95, but, but, that is not the criteria that you should be using. The thesis of this product is not parts to be stripped for other decks, nor is it reprints of value. The thesis is on gameplay. How well do these decks play? A lot better than previous iterations, for sure. I'd say these decks are reasonably balanced against one another, and their biggest problem in terms of gameplay is they don't have a clear winning strategy. This is a problem a lot of casual Magic the Gathering decks have always had. They are much more a collection of interesting cards that you turn over and see what happens. I've always found this is a self-limiting gameplay. The best two decks, in my opinion, therefore, are the Dragon and Elf decks, as at least Tribal Synergy does turn into 
a strategy. Play dragons, play elves. There's some great equipment in the angel deck. And again, I don't want to be disparaging because honestly, these are some of the best casual decks I've seen in years or possibly since dual decks. And in a lot of ways, that would be my best description to an established long-term magic player to convey what the gameplay is like. These honestly play like some of the better dual decks that used to exist. But how does that gameplay experience translate to someone who maybe has never played this game before? It's not extraordinary by any means. Magic the Gathering is a game that shines when you have a familiarity and comfort with the rules of the game. This contrasts with board games, as people who don't know how to play, say, Catan, can very easily sit down with friends and play a game and enjoy themselves. But someone who doesn't know how to play Magic, or only played it once a very long time ago and doesn't really remember, is likely going to have a less relaxed and less fulfilling experience. And if you're not looking for an isolated game night experience from this product, well, that's really what this product is looking to offer. $49.95, keep in mind, buys a copy of most other board games, from Settlers of Catan to Dominion to Seven Wonders, Lords of Waterdeep, and Ticket to Ride. If this right here is meant as a game night product, then you need to match it up against other board games that you're going to be playing on game night. How does it compare? I think favorably well, assuming you already know how to play Magic the Gathering. And there's so many other, I would even say better products out there for the brand new player. The best really is the Arena Starter Kit. Incredibly affordable, a perfect link between digital and paper so you can practice against the AI on Arena and slowly start getting real games both on Arena and with friends. This is really the perfect entry or portal product. Magic the Gathering is a game that improves the more you play it. But the more you play it, the less you're going to want to have an isolated experience with the same five decks. The more you play it, the more you're going to want to have decks that you design, even multiple ones, to choose from and therefore receive a more fleshed out, advanced Magic the Gathering experience. As a product, Game Night does work for a game night where you're playing with inexperienced players, but it isn't going to work for brand new players to Magic, and it's probably not satisfying for those who are very well experienced in Magic. If you don't know how to play already, there's better options out there than this. And if you do know how to play already, you're already playing, and maybe you'll get one or two games with this before wanting to move on to using your own decks and playing in the formats you already know and love. Final conclusion, Game Night 2022 is a casual battle box meant for use during board game night. And in this regard, it is satisfactory. But for both brand new and experienced players, there are better products out there. Made entirely of reprints, save for five original designs, it at least has now included a better representation of some of Magic's classic cards. Though truly, it is those brand new cards that are the biggest draw and the biggest value. But they are ultimately far from must-haves. In the end, Game Night 2022 is an okay experience for those who only sometimes play. For everyone else, it is not worth it, save for the five unique cards that you cannot get anywhere else. Grade, it's a B minus. It does have value. They have upgraded the cards within those casual decks. And even if it's not worth it to me, someone who already plays the game, or your friend's friend who has never played the game, for the small segment of people that this product is for, it's pretty good. I hope very much this video has been of some help to you. You can help me out greatly just by remembering to subscribe, hitting like, or sharing with a friend. Do you plan to pick up Game Night? Did you pick up any of the previous iterations? Why or why not? Let me know in the comments below. Hey, big thanks once again to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. Optimize your choice for fresh food delivery. Click the link in the video description and use code POGTCCOCT65 to save 65% on your first box. Thanks, HelloFresh. time on Shuffle Up and Play. Today, two of the most evil forces, evil Mark Rosewater and evil Gavin Verhey, we 
are going to be playing with decks befitting such vile personalities. Eight rack. Mill. This is the best evil you could find. This is oh. Oh. <laughs> So I'm gonna cast Visions of Beyond. Uh, let's just double check that. One, two, five. No, it's oh, got more, it's got more, it's got more. Oh, this is this. the worst. I believe I'll play this polluted delta. Trigger, trigger! Mill three, then mill three again. I'm gonna count how many cards I have in my library <laughs> first off. All right, so I'm gonna split your lands. Right, you so it's, it's like we got divorced. 